What's up fish friends, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. And today I'm gonna to show you all these saltwater aquariums I've had, and I'm gonna take a look at them with the benefit of hindsight to let you know what I think I got wrong and what I got right. Now, if this is your first time here, I put out a video every week with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Right, let's get to the tanks. So this was my first saltwater tank from 2014. It's a three foot 60 gallon clear seal reef space that I started with live rock and a skimmer only. Now overall, I was actually really happy with this tank, but looking back at it now, all I see is a really poorly designed rockscape. While there are some nice overhangs and swim throughs, the problem with this scape is just how steep the rock work was. The left hand side island was more or less a sheer cliff face, which made it extremely difficult to place corals. Graduated slopes are the best structures for placing corals, and simply getting corals to stick in place on an upright structure was nigh on impossible. And if we wind forward to how the tank looks at 18 months old, you can see there were still no corals on the left hand cliff face and that I'd rather crudely added more rock to try to fix the problem. But the tank at 18 months also demonstrates different problems I had. The filtration in this tank suited quite a low stock of fish with fairly basic corals. But as I progressed, I wanted to move on to SPS corals, which I did with only limited success. They didn't ever really thrive, and I felt like the tank would have been much better suited to soft and LPS corals only. And I ended up adding too many fish. My filtration was pretty limited with just live rock and a cheap skimmer, and I ended up pushing the tank beyond its capacity. Around 5 or 6 would have been perfect for this tank, but I ended up with double figures, and that led to an ugly algae covered sandbed and hair algae on the rocks. And I also got my cleanup crew wrong, choosing only a few snails and favouring hermit crabs. A blue tuxedo urchin, a couple of conches, and a dozen blackfoot troker snails would have done this tank the world of good, and probably would have kept the algae at bay. And an algae grazing fish like a small tang or fox face would have been another great help. I didn't get a tang for this tank having been put off by the tank police, but I was never going to keep this tank for more than two years. If you're worried about aggression, as I've mentioned a few times recently on the channel, putting a mirror at one end of your tank for a week will probably occupy the tang long enough for his aggression to pass and allow harmony to return to your tank. And at the end of the day, if a tang goes rogue or outgrows your tank, you can always remove it. They're the first fish to check out fish traps when you put them in the tank, so catching them is likely to be pretty straightforward. After just under two years, I finally realized that I needed a bigger tank to fulfill my ambitions of keeping loads of fish and moving into SPS corals. It's not that you can't keep SPS in small tanks, of course, but for a first time SPS keeper, a larger water volume will be much more forgiving of your mistakes. So I got this Evolution Aqua EA Reef 1200, which was four foot by two foot by 18 inches tall and around 80 gallons. For this tank, I combined my two islands from the previous tank to form one super island on the right hand side. And that looked really good. But the new rock work I added to the left hand side was a really poor effort. I used dry real reef rock, which let me take my time with shaping how I wanted it to look. And while the platform across the top was great for mounting corals, I still ended up with sheer cliff edges instead of nice angles. Honestly, dogs learn faster than this. Most local fish shops will let you play around with their rocks and set up a scape of your own on their shop floor. So go in on a quiet day and spend half an hour or more playing with rocks until you find the right look. But for me, the best thing about this scape was the use of negative space. I ended up adding more rock work later on, but in the early days, having the tank filled with empty space combined with a nice clean sand bed looked absolutely fantastic. It's so difficult resisting adding as much rock as possible, but a minimal escape will always look awesome and will of course be cheaper to cover in corals. On the subject of corals though, I did get some of the placement wrong with this tank. The plating montipores I had were in the perfect place, right on the edge of the rocks, reaching out into the space of the tank. But I put an encrusting monte in place without thinking about where it would spread to. And it ended up taking over the main ledge on the right hand island, which was prime real estate and would have been perfect for a branching SPS coral like Millipora. Apart from that, I was happy with my coral placement. Having SPS breaching the surface looks awesome, and I even found crabs sitting on top of the stuff at times, poking their heads out of the water. And the few LPS corals I had were in enough space so that they didn't sting their neighbors. Fish-wise, I did okay for numbers in this tank. I had around 18 at the end, which was fine because of my larger skimmer, phosphate reactor, Ciparax media, and algae bed. The only thing I got wrong here was the mix of colors. There were too many dull colored fish, and I've since found that bright contrasting colored fish make the absolute world of difference. And that rationale extends to the corals I chose. 
As I was only just getting into SPS, my main criteria was ease of keeping, and because of that I always looked at this tank critically and wondered how much better it could have been. So I spent as much time planning my next tank as I did working on this one. And sadly due to a house move, this tank got shut down in its prime. I'd moved a small freshwater tank before and it was a total nightmare, so there was no way I was going to risk moving this to a new house. And that gave me the chance to start from scratch and have a shot at perfection. But the house move ended up taking longer than expected, so after about 4 months of no tank at all, I got myself a nano tank to tide me over. This was a 2 foot 25 gallon Aqua One Mini Reef 120 that I christened the interim tank. The acronym of which was of course purely coincidental. And because this was only ever going to be a holding tank, I didn't put any real effort into the scape, which meant it looked bang average. And I bought fish that I knew would eventually end up in my upgrade, which meant they weren't entirely suitable for this tank. And because it was only ever going to be a short term thing, I rushed the stocking and ended up with an overcrowded tank that burst into algae blooms. So when I think about what I got right on this tank, it's a pretty short list. However, I did absolutely nail the lighting. In my previous tank I had T5s, which were awesome for curls, but they gave the tank a really flat look. So with this tank I built myself a T5 LED hybrid. The LED was a Kessel A360WE, which gave out pitifully low power of around 250 dead center, 10 inches below the waterline, but looked absolutely fantastic. The colour and shimmer of Kessel is just so superior to anything else on the market. For some people, Kessels on their own give too much shimmer, but adding T5s to the mix takes the edge off that nicely. With regard to the tank, it actually did look okay for a while despite its limitations, but when I added rock that had all the algae on it, everything went south. But the one lesson I'd learned was to isolate encrusting corals, which led to the creation of what I now call my zoocock. And the other lesson I learned was that I was right when I said moving a tank would be a ball ache. It took two people, a large van, an entire day and a lot of arguments to move this tiny little tank only 50 miles. Never again. And that brings me to my current tank, the Red Sea Reefer Peninsula 500. This is 4 foot 2 inches by 2 foot by 2 foot and holds around 100 gallons. And this is the first tank I've had that I don't really look at critically. Although a minimal escape would have been awesome, I wanted lots of fish and corals, so more real estate was more important to me. I'm not saying this is the perfect tank, and I'm sure there will be things that some of you would change, starting with putting a black background on the back. But for me, I've got almost everything how I wanted it this time. The fish are all varied in colour, shape, behaviour and swimming areas, and I've got some absolutely banging aquapora corals. If I was to start again, I would have gone for encrusting Cyphastria corals instead of the zoas on the far end of the rockscape, and I'd probably generally pack the corals in too tightly here. But apart from that, this is exactly how I want it. My cleanup crew is almost exclusively snail based, with conches and blackfoot trochus snails doing the legwork, and they're ably supported by my blue tuxedo urchin and my purple tang and one spot fox face. But there have been lessons learned still. I've tried a couple of reef safe with caution fish that haven't panned out, most notably a scarus koi parrotfish who started munching on my SPS corals, and a harlequin tuskfish who started eating my fish. And if I'm honest, I'm now bored of my resplendent anthias. They're about as peaceful and easy to keep as anthias get, but they still bicker and have faded to a much more dull pink. I also underestimated how much light I'd need. One Kessel AP700 and four T5 tubes simply wasn't enough. I currently have a Kessel A360 in support, but I'll be replacing it with a second AP700 in the not too distant future. And as my corals grow, I'll need to add more flow to the far end of the tank, which is a bit of a shame as it'll detract from the overall peninsula look. But apart from that, all is well in the world, and it's a great feeling to simply be able to enjoy watching a tank grow out. It's of course worth a look at my sump, which I'm now pretty much happy with. My X-Filter automatic filter roller keeps my water clear, and turns a nice shade of brown that tells me it's helping with nutrients. And my algae bed is almost perfect, except that the single tonsy light I have isn't quite up to the task at 9 watts, so I've ordered a second one that will be going in soon. Then I have my huge skimmer, a NIOS Quantum 220 rated at 400 gallons. I'm a little torn with this, it pulls out plenty of dark skimmate, so I don't necessarily think it's too big for the tank, even though it's rated for up to 400 gallons. But based on what BRS TV have been saying recently, I do wonder if the next size down would have been as good, or maybe even better. 
But ultimately, it works well for my system with 27 well-fed fish, so there's no reason to change. Now this tank has been going for around 20 months so far, so it's nice and settled. This is a long-term project, so I don't plan on upgrading anytime soon. If I were to start again though, I think the only thing I'd change is that I'd go bare bottom. But sand looks so much better that I can't say I regret it, and I have a fairly thin layer of sand, so it won't be as much of a detritus trap as a deeper bed would be. All in all, I feel like this tank has the potential to be something quite special for me. But a two year old tank is still pretty young, so stick around for future videos and I'll keep you updated with how it gets on. So that is a history of all the saltwater tanks I've had so far. I'd love to know what you guys think about them, so let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week. And until next time, happy reefing.